Hey guys, it's Dr. Bacon, and um, we have a special guest today, <laughs> Peter Bowler from uh, UC Irvine. He's a professor in um, evolutionary biology and the director of the UCI Arboretum. And um, he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, mycorrhizal. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah. He taught me how to <laughs> say it correctly. Uh, mycorrhizal. Uh, um, associations. Associations with fungus. So we're going to let him uh, talk a little bit. First, do you want to tell me what you brought me over? Uh, yeah, I brought you uh, a bunch of material about uh, mycorrhizae and the symbiosis and also some material. There's a, a group called the Mycorrhizal Association in Cannabis Cultivation. Okay. That talks about some specific applications. And where did you find that? Uh, on the internet, and there is a, a link if you just look up mycorrhizal and association. I'll put that link. I'll put that link in the description. Sure, absolutely. Right. Okay. Well, uh, well, tell us about. What can you tell us about? Well, basically, uh, you know, we don't really realize it. You know, you walk around in the woods and and the grasslands. You don't realize it, but you're walking on a giant underground spider-like web of mycorrhizae, the filaments that make up. Uh, fungus. Okay. So these are like little threads under the ground and uh, most plants are associated with them. About 90 percent of higher plants have one of several kinds associated with uh, their roots. And trees and uh, shrubs usually have what's called ectomycorrhizae that uh, actually encircle and form a layer on the outside of the, the root, the root hairs. Things like herbaceous plants, almost all of them have it, have uh, endomycorrhizae. And in terms, and, and let me just quickly say, who gets what? The, the fungus doesn't do this for nothing. They uh, get photosynthate from photosynthesis in plants. That's transported down to the roots, and they exchange that then for phosphorus and other important minerals that the plant needs to grow. So it's like a, a handshake. You know, they trade off underground. Um, so if you plant a plant in store-bought, the, the, the high-quality soil we use, is there some traces of that to start with in there? Or if you don't introduce it to a, a potted plant, does it appear? Uh, usually not. Uh, you can buy uh, inoculated, meaning that it's there and will attack the, will attach to the roots. You can buy uh, inoculated plants. And for example, in habitat restoration, when you're trying to reintroduce uh, plants that are grown to, to go back into the wild and reestablish a natural mm. habitat, uh, you want that in it. Wow. And often it's site specific, that is, you get it from a particular place, culture it, and then inoculate the roots. There, there are places on the UCI campus, for example, that we have commissioned plants to be grown with my, mycorrhizae from particular places. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And then you plant it and the coastal sage grub comes up like gangbusters. Wow. Wow, now, so you have to introduce it. That's amazing. You, yeah, you do. I mean, it is there. But, uh, but in the cycle of one of our plants, it growing for two years and then and then flowering I, for two years. I doubt or, that I mean, it would. I mean, two months. Yeah. It, huh, that's I, interesting. I tell you, we've been we've been using some only because uh, someone uh, uh, gave our friend San Diego Chuck gave us some, and he gave us a bag. And the the brand I believe was Micah Jordan, and uh, and we definitely have had some interesting improvements on our cloning success, and we're using that. Dusting, um, actually, dusting the um, the cuttings and directly on the, the cuttings. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, plants do better with it. Hmm. Now there there are a few groups that don't like it at all. Uh, many of our non-native species uh, don't use it. Really. And so, for example, mustard family plants don't relish it at all and in fact some hypothesize that they actually kill them really? making it easier to invade natural habitats because other things that <coughs> that benefit from it yeah mm. now you can grow uh, 
plants like marijuana and many, many herbaceous plants without it. Mm -hmm. But Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Uh, huh. But uh, marijuana is viewed as uh, an obligate mycotrope, meaning that they do much better with it. Interesting. And sort of if they had a choice, they, they would, they'd be using it. They would go for it. it. Yeah. Hmm. So what they get, uh, this mycorrhizal magic net in the soil that you walk on, mm -hmm. uh, it collects uh, phosphorus, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a key growth component. I mean, nitrate and phosphate are, are fertilizer. So uh, particularly in areas where the soil's a little sparse, uh, mycorrhizae can extend the soil that is uh, a benefit to the plant. Hmm. So it's like mini roots almost. It's, wow. it's like a mystery. That's great. You know, science like magic, <laughs> but it's real. All right. Well, well, thank you, Peter. That was that's incredible. And uh, we'll put this link for the material you brought in right. in the description. And I really love you, buddy. Love you. My my absolute pleasure. And try <laughs> it. You know, it's uh, well. We've it's we've a been having adventure. a great. We've been having great results with this, yeah. this sample we got. All right. Excellent. All Thank right, you. guys, that's it. Uh, like and subscribe. Click the little bell if you uh, want to get every episode, and we'll see you soon. Bye now. Thank you, and I want to subscribe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dr. Bacon, like and subscribe. <laughs>